So, guys, uh, my screen seems to have frozen, so that's a great start to everything that's going on. Let me just refresh my screen here. There we go, we are back now. Can you see me now? If you can see me, say so in the comment section. Sorry about that, we had a bit of a freeze, a bit of a glitch on the screen, and I froze. Tonight's guest, you are in for an absolute treat. Uh, one of the books I mentioned a few times during these series of shows has been uh, a book called Deeper and Deeper by a gentleman called Jonathan Chase. Many of you will be familiar with him. If you are not familiar with this guy, then you probably should not be in the stage hypnosis business. Um, he has a career that spans four decades. Um, he is a phenomenal hypnotist. Um, many of you would have seen his YouTube clips. I know to me they've been a big inspiration in the past. This guy is a great guy, very, very outspoken. Um, I believe this 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 talk is going to be a bit like herding cats, um, but it's all good fun. This guy is absolutely great. He has, uh, let's have a look at here, he's an award-winning, best-selling TEDx speaker and edutainer with 1.4 million views on youtube he is an absolutely phenomenal hypnotist he does more training now and here's the thing the guys that trained a lot of you guys were probably trained by this guy most of the successful hypnosis trainers out there now have at some point done some work with this guy and it's quite bizarre that a lot of the people that make a lot of noise about hypnosis both in the the training the stage and and the, the therapy arena again have all kind of come up through uh, uh, jonathan's uh, Academy, the Hypnotic Arts Academy, I believe it was. And um, so, without further ado, I'm going to play my little clip, um, and then we're going to introduce you, uh, Jonathan Chase. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, please make some noise, bang your keyboard, and uh, say hello to the man, the myth, the legend that is Jonathan Chase. He should appear. Here. Oh, we got it right. We got it right. It's the right side. Jonathan, say hello. Hello, Jonathan. Oh, <laughs> there we go. So I was just making sure that we had you with sound and everything. Um, you're in, I always ask people whereabouts in the world they are. You're in sunny Devon, which is one of the nicest parts in the United Kingdom. If you're from America and you're watching this, Devon is just an absolutely stunning place. It's like a posh oh. It's like a posh Scotland, <laughs> just to cause some grief. It's dark. It's been pissing it down with rain all day. Where do you <laughs> well, live? England. Well, I'm in Yorkshire. <laughs> oh, well, oh, well, that explains a lot. What part of Yorkshire? I'm in sunny Huddersfield. <laughs> oh. It's like you've got... I used, got to spend all all my, I used to spend all my summers till the age of nine at my auntie's in, um, in a little place... Called, uh, just outside of Driffield, Great Driffield, yeah. called, Naff called Nafferton, on the road to Bridlington. Oh, I go to I go to Bridlington quite a lot during the summer season. It's a it's an interesting drive, and we always go through a little town called Wetwang, which no matter how many times I drive through Wetwang, it always makes me smile inside, like a little ten year old boy. I promise myself I'm going to take a picture of me near the sign every time, but I never do. <laughs> but yeah, Wetwang. So what um, you've not always been in Devon. What brought you to Devon? Why did you move down oh, there? Oh, no. Hang on one sec. Just let me take my glasses off so that you look better. <laughs> oh, that's it. You've gone blurry now. Um, there we go. <laughs> no, I've got, I've got my earphones on, and they, they're over my ear, and the glasses are over my ear, and my ears aren't that big. So, ah. I mean, yeah, so what, you wouldn't have that, that problem, is... but... You know. Anyway, um, <laughs> yes, I'm from Cannock in Staffordshire. I'm a Midlands lad. I am not a Brummie. Oh. I'm not a Peaky Blinder. I'm not a Yam Yam. I'm South Staffs. That's Pisses a, that's me off. Of <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know about that. <laughs> I don't know about that. Um, uh, my, my dad, my dad was a coal miner. Nice. Now, nice. posh about but, yours. Uh, do you know what? It, it was it was one of the great industries that we had in this country that we don't really have anymore. Uh, you know, being in Yorkshire, you know, we had a, a lot of, you know, we were devastated by the mining community. But that's all. There speaks a bloke who's never been down the hole. 
I've not been down a dirty hole. These hands are not. I, I learned. <laughs> I learned my trade of stage hypnosis um, by going out on stage in miners in coal miners' welfares. I mean, I've I've, I've done all the Yorkshire ones. I did all the Scottish yeah. ones. I even did a couple in Kent. You wouldn't believe that there's coal mines in Kent. You'd think they'd fill yeah. up with water, wouldn't you? But. Um, <laughs> And I'd go out to like two or three hundred guys who were sitting there next to the wives after the singer and the two houses of bingo, you know. Yeah. So so only one person was happy in the whole room, and that was the person who'd won the bloody bingo. You know, all the rest of them were shouting the wrong numbers. <laughs> and they'd be sitting there with their arms folded like that and say, right, we've been in and out in the ground for seven and a half hours for the last six days this week. Entertain us, you bastard. Yeah. And that's where I learned my trade. I also learned to I, duck. <laughs> yeah. I think uh, there's a few people saying hello as well. We'll just say hello to these. John McCabe says hi. Uh, Julie Fraser says hello. Uh, Alicia, uh, the violinist who's amazing, says hi. And Becky Willoughby uh, says hi to you both. Uh, it's great what you just said then about the kind of the working men's We've got Brian Glenn. Glenn. I should have mentioned Brian Glenn. Brian Glenn. Brian Glenn's here as well. Hi, Brian. Uh, and Natasha Stanley as well. There we go. Yes. Um, yeah, you talk about the, the working men's clubs. Um, I think that's it's a great training ground for a lot of performers that modern performers like now that are brought up on the whole YouTube generation and Britain's Got Talent. I think they miss that. I think you've got to, it, you've got to work was. some things. Yeah, you've got, you've got to work them to know, to know that when you're shit, how to survive, if you know what I mean. Uh, if if you're not if you're not like you said, I've never had that problem. Up. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I've, I've I've turned up at some venues where it's just been like I've had you know, some shit nature. audiences. I've had some shit audiences, but I've never done a shit show. <laughs> I, you know what? I'm having that line. I'm I'm stealing that line. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Uh, so I'll look at it this way. I'll look at it this way. If you went in and did a brilliant show, and they they, they immediately came up to you afterwards and said. We've got to have you back. It, that that was fabulous. That was great. And then the next show you go and do, you do exactly the same show, and they they turn yeah. around and say, "That was a load of rubbish." Then yeah. it's a shit audience, not a shit me, because I'm the same yeah. every time I go out, or I should be yeah. the same every time I go out. If if my show's shit one night, then I'm not a professional entertainer. Yeah. And yeah. I come from. An entertainer who learned to hypnotise rather than a, yes. a, a hypnotherapist who thinks they can yes. entertain, you know. So. Yeah. I think uh, oh, most, most of the people. What, yeah. what, what are they <laughs> saying? In, They're not saying anything yet. <laughs> They're sharpening well, they the arrow. <laughs> um, I, I, most of the, the performers we've had on here. Uh, come from the same place. They've had an they've had a, uh, an entertainment background, whether it be circus or or for whatever it's been, and then learn to hypnotise and use hypnosis as entertainment. Hypnotherapists, not all of them. Hypnotherapists come to it um, from a hypnotherapy point of view and try and demonstrate hypnosis, um, and that's that's when it, sometimes it doesn't hit because you've got to. It's the bits between the bits that kind of keep the audience. If you lose your audience. It doesn't matter how profound the hypnosis is. Nobody, nobody cares. <laughs> it's my Eric Morecambe impersonation. You're boring me now. Let's talk stages. <laughs> I warned you. I know. Um, I know. Um, so, um, see, see it doesn't can't... matter what situation I'm in. Um, I, I will try. I, Jane came to visit me, but I, I'd had a quadruple heart bypass, and Jane came to visit me. Um, the evening after I'd been woken up, and she said, "I knew, I knew which bit of this ward you were on." I said, "Why?" She said, "The nurses are running out laughing." <laughs> I said, "Well, you know, you can be miserable or you can be happy." It's, you know. Yeah, it's fair to say. Um, you know, you've faced your challenges health-wise over the years. Um, and still remain quite positive. This is a subject you speak about as well as a professional speaker. Oh, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, see, already people, it's, if you pick on me, they love you. So, yeah, already people have said that they love you. Natasha Stanley says she loves you as well. So, yeah. Um, how did 
Uh, you're one of the. You'll talk later, Natasha. Mm -hmm. <laughs> hey, at my uh, age, you take everything you get, mate. <laughs> uh, that, well, <laughs> hey, <laughs> no comment. Um, it's it's um, like Billy Connolly said when I saw him in Plymouth when he was 65. He said, he said, cerebral palsy, put his hand in his pocket. He said, never, never waste an opportunity. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Um, how has how has the transition been for that on stage? I know you did a stage show uh, and you in your chair in one of the clips that we're about to play. How was that transition? I, mean, I know I run up and down the stage and I do stuff in my show. Um, how did you find that as a, a challenge or was it just something you've evolved into? Right. In 1993, I fell off stage in Corby in Northamptonshire and broke my femur, shattered my femur. And 17 weeks later... Um, I, I was down to do a show with the Bachelors, who was still, you know, big, big noise then. Are, are we on? Yeah, you're still on. All oh, right. They were big noise then, and um, the bank, the bank account was getting quite small. So I thought I, I better do something. So that was when I did my first show in a wheelchair. And in those days, we used to use microphones with leads. The, 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 you know, there was no radio like so they got all tanked up around the chair and everything. And I never saw it as a transition. It's just, it's like in life, you know. Um, it's just a different pair of shoes, mate. Is he, is he, is he gone? Yeah, oh, he's on the other side now. What sides now? That I... scared me. <laughs> yeah, that's magic for you. Um yeah, um, you did a show at the Edinburgh Fringe uh, oh, a couple of years ago. Oh, uh, yeah, you did a show at the Edinburgh Fringe a couple of years ago. Uh, the Mechanical Mesmerists. Um, how the Marvellous Mechanical. The Marvellous, Marvellous mecha Mechanical Mesmerists. How was that? Uh, the Fringe is, is, is something that I've seen quite Don't a few Don't work with attempt. actors. Don't ever work <laughs> with actors when, you, when you're used to doing impromptu. Um, it was interesting. Yeah. It was interesting. It, it's actually the first play to include hypnosis of the audience and bring them on stage as members of the play. And it's oh. the first hypnotic show and the only hypnotic show to ever be funded by the Arts Council. Yes, yes. Uh, I, I remember seeing all the, the promo going out for it at the time. That was the hardest work I've ever done in professional entertainment is the, the application for that. It took six months. Oh, wow. So, yeah, that's definitely uh, it's definitely something a bit different. Um, is that something you would do again? Yeah, bro, yeah. <laughs> Seriously. No, yeah. no, I, I, mean, I mean, with all due respect to the actors, you know, they were trained hypnotists because I, I, I knew they were good trained hypnotists because I did it. <laughs> and they, you know, and, and, and that, but they couldn't deviate off the script. And if, and if an audience is like 13 people in a, in quite a large, in a 200 seat venue, you know, which actually is double the size of the average audience at the Edinburgh Fringe, um, you, you know, forget what you see on the BBC tent, you know, because, yeah. like, they're the big names, you know, but but the average audience at the Edinburgh Fringe is seven. Yeah. So, and if you've got 14 people in the room, you really have to work the audience. Yeah. And you have to know to work the audience. And if you deliver the, the gag line and it don't get the laugh, you have to punch it and push it. Yeah. And of course, I was working with actors who'd got the fourth wall. Yeah. And they couldn't get through the fourth wall. You know, yeah. they tried. They tried. Lovely, lo lovely um, Paul Henshaw, uh, yeah. who's um, another wheelchair user, and Anna Scott is is very, very good looking girlfriend. I must admit, cracked it there. No, but um, they, they, they tried, but they got a bit cross with me when I talked over them and things like that when things weren't going good but but that's the problem with you know i mean um 
people don't realise just how impromptu stage hypnosis is yeah. and has to be because yeah. you know and I know, you never know what you're going to get on stage. Yeah. Here's a line you will nick. <laughs> I've got my I know it's been nicked several times. And I always just say this to the audience. Ladies and gentlemen, one warning. I'm responsible for what goes in. I am not responsible for what comes out. Yeah, yeah, great line. So, you know, and so you just, you don't know, do you? I was doing a, a, a golf club. It was a public golf club somewhere in Essex one year. And um, it, it, this was not a posh place. Oh. This, Let's put it this way. I'm sitting in the office talking to the manager. The two bouncers come in and one took a machete out of his long coat. <laughs> and I thought, I said to Jim, I said, we're going OTT tonight. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I thought, in a place like that, it's no good being Mr. Nice Family Show, yeah. guys. So, you know. And the only difference with my family show and, and my OTT show was that I said, fuck when I gave him the orgasm at the end. Otherwise, <laughs> I didn't bother. But, <laughs> you know, I still I still gave him an orgasm at the end. You just didn't swear. I just didn't swear. <laughs> but um, but I'm getting the audience up, and you, you know what it's like. I mean, you've done the clubs. I, I saw the table with the lads on it, you know, the one that, like, yeah. with the best-looking girls, the, the lads that everybody else is sort of like looking over at. If they laughed, we laughed. You, yeah. you know what I mean? If they didn't laugh, we were all. Oh, that's a bit, yeah. And obviously the man got up, you know, because I'm going to be hypnotised. And as he walked past me, he said, Cut my clothes off, Gaffer, and I'll have you bollocks on a plane. Yeah. So, hmm. Yes, <laughs> but that's I think that's the, the joys of, of like you said earlier. You kind of you do one venue and everything's one way, and you go somewhere else and it's a completely different experience. Um, and because we visit different types of venues with different kind of people that go there, almost anything can happen. What's the weirdest thing that's ever happened to you on stage? On stage, yeah, it's Timmy Book, Kidderminster. Um. Or was it Stourbridge? Stourbridge Working Men's Club, yeah, Up, upstairs. Yeah. And they, they said, do, 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 do you want the stage lighting on? <laughs> I, said, I, said, I said, show me what it's like. They said, oh, okay, I'll put it on. And it was a fucking car headlamp on a battery at the back of the <laughs> room. Love it. I couldn't, I couldn't <laughs> see. It was on full beam as well. I couldn't see a bleeding thing. So <laughs> I said, no, we'll, we'll, we'll crap. <laughs> yeah. And I hypnotised this one girl and she went in, put the suggestions in, did the smell. You, you, you know, the test suggestions. Yeah. Like we give them something to smell. We give them something to hear. We give them something to respond to verbally. So as, as we're going through it, we're thinking, right, I'll use you for that. I'll use you for that. You, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to send home. Because like you're as funny as watching townhouse decaying, you know, and and this one girl, nice, nice, pretty looking girl. I always like the nice, pretty looking girl. <laughs> I, I I heard you saying to Christina Lennon when you talked to her, you know, that that hypnotists have this sleazy sleazy reputation for well, looking yes. down. <laughs> Down the dresses of these girls in universities, I always bloody did. Anyway, <laughs> no, 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 but, no, 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 you know, that, that was acceptable then. And it was part of the humour. I mean, I was a, a big fan of uh, Bernard Manning. Bernard Manning, in his time, I think is one of the, is a very funny comedian, great delivery. Great, great comic shit person. 
I'm, I'm... No, ser- seriously, seriously, he come into the dressing room and he said, that's the last time I'll fucking follow a hypnotist. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I must admit, yeah, Bernard was always, <laughs> he, needed, he needed a pint of orange juice, uh, a pint of orange juice next to his mic, he wanted his cash, uh, and then he wanted to be gone. Um, he was a but, pro. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. He was a pr- profession. Yeah, absolutely. But I'll tell, yeah. I'll tell you a great professional now that everybody wants to watch wants to watch on YouTube and then join his his thing for a tenor a month, and that's Jim Davidson. Oh yeah. yeah, and and Jim Davidson is doing JD TV and he's doing all the he's doing all the oh, whoops I went the wrong way he's doing all the British stuff and everything you know and um, yeah. and and talking about what he talks about and no <laughs> he, he, he's. He's not racist. He's a very good observer, yeah. and um, but but you know you've got all these all these. Oh well, I'm an entertainer. What shall I do? It's COVID, and I can't go out and gig. And what shall I do? And everything. <laughs> Jim Davidson started broadcasting the day of the first lockdown. Yeah, yeah. He's now got over 127,000 subscribers, paying oh. him a tenner a month. So he's just replaced his full up theatres yeah. with full up YouTubes. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, you and know. I think there's, there's, I mean, it's one of the questions I've got written down to ask you. It's, it's where is entertainment moving forward to? Where do you see stage hypnosis going, uh, especially with the likes of like TikTok and YouTube now? Do you see stage hypnosis becoming more of a, a skit on, on the internet rather than a stage performance? With all due respect to people who are still performing like you, it's gone. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's it's not what it it's not what it was. When it became a magician's trick, yeah. that killed it. Yeah. Yeah. Because when I started, there were the the there were no more than a dozen of us mm. in the nineties. Yeah. And we could command time, wages. You know, the, were we we were the highest paid acts in the country. End yeah. of story. Yeah. You know, um, the, the 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 well, some of us were. Some of us were shit acts, and nobody wanted to handle them. But <laughs> everybody <laughs> will remain nameless on that. But, <laughs> but but you know, but but there was a time. There was a time where just the word hypnotist on a theatre on a, on on a theatre billboard would fill the theatre. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and if you went in like when I went into Exmouth Pavilion the first time and did my, my first summer season down in Devon, um, like we broke all box office records. Yeah. yeah, but that was because the word hypnotist was on the front of the the, the pavilions. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and anybody who thinks different, anybody who thinks oh, it's because it was this hypnotist or that hypnotist, you know. Um, Wicked Men's clubs were, were, were a bit different, you know. They they would book the favourite, and they would book yeah. somebody that I had to tell one Wicked Men's club to stop booking me because I'd been there so often yeah. I couldn't get anybody on stage. Yeah. And when I talk to people afterwards, they say, "I'm not coming up. I went up last time and missed the bloody show." Yeah, yeah. Everybody wanted to watch. Nobody wanted to take part. Yeah. So, but um, no, I'm sorry, Grant. It's it's. You know, if uh, it, there's yeah. still there's still the kids' entertainment side of it in the United States of America. There's a lot yeah. of high schools. Yeah. But 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 fifty percent of work that's in America is kids' entertainment because yeah. they're entertaining children in schools. Yeah. You know? I, I think Which uh, we're not allowed to do legally. Oh absolutely. I think uh, has this audience is now this it's a double edged sword as such. Uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of dilution to stage hypnosis and a cheapening of it with training and poor training and people doing bad shows, which makes people not want to buy tickets to see another show. And then on the other side, you've got um, you've got generations of people now that don't know what a hypnotist is. You know, the closest thing they've seen to a hypnosis show is Darren Brown, which is is in effect a magic show. So you do kind of get people that don't see that. Let me just, I've frozen again. I'm just going to refresh this. There we go. Sorry, I froze for a second then. Uh, so, yeah, so it's kind of a double-edged sword in that way. 
But one of the things that I've noticed over the years is people's, what fascinates people about the show has changed. It used to be, and I'm sure you'll agree, it used to be make this person do something ridiculous um, and that's hilarious. And the induction bit was the, the, the boring bit. Um, now, I think audiences are fascinated almost as much by the induction bit as what they are, the silly bit, if you know what I mean. People have an interest in the psychology of it now rather than the, just the making people do silly things. Um, the clip that we're about to show now uh, of your induction, uh, where, where was this done, by the way? It was, oh, the, one, the, the wonderful Pier Theatre in Brighton. In uh, Bournemouth, in Bournemouth, it's now, it's now, see, you're talking about a change in audience, it's it's a change in humanity and, and the way we get yeah. our feels kicks now, you know, I mean, I spend all bloody day on YouTube, me, you know, but, um, but, boy, when I was, when I was a lad and I, I was a lad a bit before, I, I was a lad when your dad was a lad, like, you know. When, <laughs> when, I, when, when I started drinking at 15, you know, because I was a big lad. Um, yeah. Friday and Saturday nights, we went up the co-op or we went around Bridgetown Working Men's Club and they got 400, 500 seat function rooms that were chocker. Yeah. And you would see names like... Bernard Manning, Les Dawson, Jim Davidson, you know, the top comics in the country would be working yeah. the working men's clubs, you know. I mean, um, you wouldn't believe the names of some of the people that I've worked with at places like Goodyear's, which was a 400 seat, and Nietzsche's working men's club in, in Coventry, which was a 600 seat, you know, and, and they were going to be full. They were going yeah. to be full, you know, a, a brilliant cabaret venue, Blocksridge Memorial. I don't know if it still is, but... I've, I've gigged at Blocksridge Memorial myself. It's a, it's a great venue. It, before COVID, still doing well, and a massive function room as well. So, yeah, uh, yeah, love, love Blocksridge. And you know what? I love the, I love the two tiers. Well, well that's, that, 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 that was four miles from my house, you know. I used to walk. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> It's one of the few venues that still has a great atmosphere. If I was, it still has that old school working men's club feel. Everyone's up in the chairs. Everyone's having a great laugh. So it's that's that's a great venue, is that? Uh, but there's not many of that size that are, are doing as as well as that. If you know what I mean. So yeah, yeah. Right. Let me play this clip. Um, this it's a six minute long clip. Uh, and it is quite hypnotic, so if you're watching, please don't go into hypnosis, which in itself is a suggestion to go into hypnosis, so forget that suggestion as well. Um, so blink three times. Uh, so I'm going to play this clip. <laughs> I'm going to play this clip now, and Enjoy then uh, we shall see you on the other side. Now, ladies and gentlemen, normally what happens with most hypnosis shows is that um, you see one induction and the induction. Induction means to create hypnosis, that's all the word is. Yeah? And, but there are several ways, absolutely wonderful ways, that we can do this. <laughs> yes, you look worried already, don't you? I'm not picking on you, you're just first. Now, what I want you to do, sir, what's your name? Louis. Louis. Yes. Stick this arm straight out, Louis, and make it go stiff. Make it go stiff like iron, like steel, like a rod, like iron, like steel. Imagine, Louis, what that arm would have to feel like so I could not bend it. Okay? That's great. Now imagine, Louis, what that arm would have to feel like so you can bend it. Imagine what that arm has to feel like so you can't bend it. Try really hard to bend it, Louis. Try really, really hard. Try harder and harder and harder. You find it won't bend. And guess what, Louis? You're hypnotized. Sleep. Deeper, deeper, deeper. More and more relaxed. It's very simple, very easy. It happens incredibly quickly. It's really good, isn't it? Yeah? Okay. What's your name now? Hannah. Hannah, close your eyes. And just pretend, just imagine that your eyes will not open. And when you're sure, when you're absolutely certain your eyes will not open, test them. Okay, now I'm locking your eyes, Hannah. I'm touching you on the forehead, I'm locking your eyes. 
and as you try really hard to open your eyes, what's happening is the hypnosis is going from your eyelids across the top of your head, down the back of your neck, down through your shoulders, down through your feet, going down to the floor and go into hypnosis and go to sleep, 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 sleep. Deeper, deeper, deeper. Allow your heavy head to drop forward and just go down into that wonderful, wonderful state of calming, deep hypnosis. You know what I, hypnosis is, don't you? So you've seen it, you're, you're aware of it, yeah, okay. There's some countries, yes, some countries, no. Press down on my hand. Press down, press, press. No, don't grab it, just press down. Press, press really hard, press hard. Harder, 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 sleep. Deeper, 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 more and more relaxed. That's called a shock induction. <laughs> it was a bloody shock for him, wasn't it? <laughs> yes, it was a bit of a shock for me as well. Okay, I wasn't going to do that. Hello? Oh, God. No, you're close, but not quite. Just got to come around here. As I said, it is a problem, you know. Look at the light, at any one of the bright lights. Look at it, stare at it. Do not take your eyes away from it, no matter what I do, no matter what I say, no matter what happens. Do not take your eyes away from that light. What's your name? What's your full name? Okay, I'm going to touch you here, 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 here. Is that okay? I know it is, I just did it. Okay, look at that light, staring at that light, and begin to spell your name. Your full name. And do it backwards. And while you're doing that, notice how heavy your eyes getting there, you're getting heavier and heavier and heavier, wanting to close, wanting to close, or wanting to close, as you just go deeper and deeper and deeper, and more and more asleep. Close, deep, sleep, 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 sleep. Deeper and deeper and deeper. More and more asleep as you go down deeper, and deeper and deeper. What's your name, sir? Justin. Justin, watch my finger. Deep, 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 deep. Deep asleep. Deep asleep. Deep asleep. A traditional way of hypnotizing people, of course, is just to do this. Close your eyes. Feel your feet relaxing. Feel your legs relaxing. Feel your knees relaxing. Feel your thighs relaxing. Feel your hips relaxing. Feel your abdomen and your torso relaxing, feel your back relaxing, feel your arms relaxing, feel your neck relaxing, feel your face relaxing, feel your arms and eyes relaxing. As you go down deeper and deeper and deeper into that wonderful state of hypnosis, just going down deeper and deeper and deeper, more and more relaxed, deeper and deeper. Deeper and deeper. Could you bring my watch, please? My watch. Okay. Deeper and deeper and deeper. This is lovely, isn't it? You're shitting a brick, aren't you? <laughs> okay. Do you want to go fast or slow? Whatever. Look me in the eye. Look me in the eye, don't look around the eye. Look me in the eye, look me in the eye, look me in the eye, do not look around the eye. Uh, three, two, one, you're under sleep. Deeper, deeper, and deeper. It's in the jacket pocket, the black one. <laughs> you can't get a staff again. <laughs> Deeper and deeper and deeper, drifting away with the sound of my voice and the sound of the beautiful music. Traditionally, ladies and gentlemen, very few hypnotists actually use this method. But just to show you that although it's completely traditional and we don't do this in therapy, just to show you that it does indeed work. Your eyes getting tired more and more tired, wanting to close, wanting to close, drifting away, drifting down, 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 deeper, 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 just go to sleep, 
just go to sleep. That's lovely. That's wonderful. Going deeper and deeper and deeper. More, more relaxed. Opening your minds, opening your imaginations. I'm going to begin counting with every number I go past, with every deep breath that you take, with every firm beat of your heart, doubling that wonderful feeling. Brilliant. So, Brilliant. So yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah, I was just I was just letting people know as well. There was a bit of an interruption there, so this we, we had to restart the live as well uh, because of Facebook's AI robots. Um, yeah, um, uh, that, Peter that, that is, was, uh, this is important to me. Uh, yeah, the, the 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 music that I use in my shows is always royalty paid. I'm yeah. I'm, I'm I'm actually I'm. Uh, I'm actually um, dogged with that because you know yeah. if you steal from another entertainer, you're lowest to the yeah. low, as far as I'm concerned. Well, it's it's in the current climate for people that are wanting to put their shows on YouTube uh, to have original music uh, enables that to happen. If you don't use original music and you're on YouTube, uh, then you can't monetize your videos. Uh, I'm, not saying, it's, I'm not saying it's entirely original, but it was done for me. It was recorded yeah. for me, and I paid the royalties on it. So it's yeah, I own the royalties on it. So. Yeah. I mean, it's one of the things with, especially with live streaming, which is a new technology. It's actually um, it's one of the to things do my Jean Michael's job, but <laughs> but I'll pay yeah. the royalties. Yeah, that, of course. But yeah, like I said, with streaming being a new technology, Facebook's robots doesn't know the difference, so it kind of goes, "Oh, that sounds like that," so we'll we'll cut it. So yeah. Um, so I'm a member um, of an organisation called Fact. Have you heard of it? Fact. Fact. Go on. Federation Against Copyright Theft. Ah. Oh. I think it's really, really uh, important. Yeah. It's if if you've been original and creating stuff, then you should be credited with it, you know. There's nothing worse than people I mean, especially within, you know, our community, it, we're rife with people oh, that model it. Don't use that word. Oh God. Modeled. That's, oh, that's <laughs> The hypnosis yeah. community. What a load <laughs> of wank that is. Have you uh, ever met believe. such a lot of competitive, miserable bastards in your life? <laughs> Do you know what? <laughs> Ten years ago, I'd have, I'd have, I'd have agreed with you 100%. Now, there's, there's a handful of other hypnotists that I talk to and can kind of go, I've had a, I've had a shit night. This is stressing me, and I can offload. And there's there's a ha and I say a handful of people that it, I can bounce some stuff off, and I like to do the same for them. Um, and online, there's the community element to it, but yeah, they are very competitive. And the worst ones are the ones that aren't doing it. They're the ones that you know know the knowledge and they're on the keyboard and they're in the forums and the groups. That's the community that's that's fake for me. It's the ones that are out there doing it. People that have walked the walk. That's okay, but there's a lot of keyboard warriors within the hypnosis community and people that are technically brilliant um, when it comes to knowledge, but when it actually comes to stepping out on that stage and making someone do something funny and the audience get it, then it's, it's a very, very small community. So, yeah, uh, Kaz Wiley's here as well. So, uh, yeah, well Kaz is I'll there. tell you, shall I tell you, he used to be really, really <laughs> funny. You can guess, he used to be funny. Shall I tell you who... Yeah. The funniest stage hypnotist is in the United Kingdom now and has been for a, at least 30 years. Um, uh, in my opinion, uh, I'd say it's one of two people that I absolutely love. Uh, they don't can go out and me, do his so. show without the hypnosis and make the audience laugh for an hour and a half. I know he could. Yeah. So Andrew tell me Newton. about it. Bollocks. No, I could do that in a million years. <laughs> the funny... <laughs> he doesn't want me. I don't like him. But, um... <laughs> no, the funniest without doubt is Ken. Yeah. Yeah. Ken, Ken's a, a great guy. Well, I, he I, doesn't I, travel. Not... He doesn't travel. He did call me. No. He, he did call me. He rang me up. He said, I'm in Corby Chase. I've just died on my arse for the first time. <laughs> 
Yeah. But I had him on the show a couple of weeks ago. Uh, great guy, great hypnotist. I've not seen his show uh, just because I know a lot of people go and see Ken's show and steal his material, uh, which I think is a bit unfair because he does write a new show every year. Uh, and so, yeah, it, out of kind of professional... Really, it can be really hard, you know, I mean, because Ken's Ken. Yeah. You know, and he's a, bit, he's a bit like a magician, you know. I mean, you've got the actual trick, but that doesn't mean that everybody can deliver it well. Absolutely. Even though they're quite, quite, you know. But, but that's the same with everything, whether you're a hypnotist, a magician, a singer, an artist, even if you're a bin man. You know, it's how you deliver that. It's about it's about making it your show. I think it's stretching it on bin men. Well, do you know what? If I was a bin man, if, if I was a bin man, I would try and be the best bin man that ever was. Do you know what I mean? And it doesn't matter what you do to earn you a living. Really pound, do. You've, got, you've got to got milk it. when I was at school, and you can't deliver milk with a flourish. You just you. Well, I you, don't know. I don't know. You just put the bottle on the step and walk away. <laughs> but you can do it with a whistle. You can make somebody's day. You can cheer them up. <laughs> Wake them up at six o'clock. Yeah. Let them be happy about that, man. I don't even do milkmen still exist. Huh? Do, you, do, you, do you still have milkmen? Is that still a thing? Do uh, milkmen still exist? There's a, few, there's a few places in Devon, sort of out in the in the wilds, and I bet there is in Yorkshire as well. You know where farms deliver deliver direct themselves and bottle their own. Yeah. Um, but yeah. now you know, I mean, you used to you used to hear the the. Well, I mean, one of my favourite. Um, Shows on the TV still open all hours, you know, and that, that electric oh, mill yeah. truck that goes past the shop at like a, a silly o'clock in the morning. I used to do that yeah. when I was 14, it was my first paid job. I, I, I used to get up a silly o'clock in the morning and go and sit next to Graham in his electric milk cart. And we'd go and deliver the milk at about half oh, four or five o'clock in the morning. I would, I would love, um, I would love a milk flow. Uh, but again, could you imagine kids today doing that, getting up at five o'clock in the morning and going delivering milk? No, I couldn't. Um, what, oh, what we've got a question here. Uh, we get flyers for the milkmen all the time. They do veg boxes too. Oh, there we go. So the milkmen do still exist. Um, a lot of people talk about stage hypnosis and where it's going to involve. I'd always like to try and talk about uh, everywhere is your stage. Whether you're a hypnotherapist, whether you're a trainer, well, no matter what it is, is you've got to be the show. You've got to make it your own, even if you're a milkman. Um, we've got another clip. Uh, this is from a, I'm guessing it's from a training seminar that you've done. And this is kind of stage hypnosis without the formality of a closed Everything I do is stage hypnosis, mate. There's a, I, I said when I was speaking in Vegas, you know, I said, look, there's only one hypnosis. There's a million styles. But hypnosis yes. is hypnosis, yeah. And the, yes, the, very, very true. You know, what some people I'm going to upset people here. What some people call <laughs> hypnotherapy has got bugger all to do with hypnosis, and yes. a lot. I am always shocked when I'm in a room full of hypnotherapists on the number of hypnotherapists. I'm sure, they're shocked too. <laughs> ever, ever, ever seen hypnosis. Yeah, and some of them have been yeah. in the game for decades, and and yeah. they think that being relaxed and not moving about much for a couple of hours while they do their psychotherapy is hit, yeah. hypnosis. And you say, well, yeah. So how did you test that then? And they go, oh well, we don't we don't test it. That would be rude. I think it's bloody rude to try <laughs> to make hypnosis and not test it because how do you know you've got it if you don't test it? Absolutely. It's it's why I believe stage hypnosis training should should be part of all kind of hypnotherapy training as such. Uh, but that's that's a whole nother can of worms. Uh, so let's show this clip. Uh, this is from uh, when when You're when is this from? Again, I know because it's my voice. There's, there's no voice. music in this. So. <laughs> If we go off air now, if Facebook AI recognizes your voice as a song, I want to know what song it recognizes it as. Right, I'm going to play this clip now. We'll see you on the other side. Is this? Give me a hand. Okay. Right. What I want you to do? Yeah. Look at the hand. Look at the hand. And look at the shape in the hand. What shape's the shape? Square. 
It's a square. What colour is the square? Yellow square. Go into the square. Go right into the square. Just go right into the square. Right into the square. That's right. Just keep going into that square. And lose yourself in that square. I want your subconscious mind to be aware of this arm. This arm's going to rise. It's going to begin to rise very, very quickly. Very, very quickly. Getting lighter and lighter and lighter. Going up, up, up as it goes into... Okay. And it just keeps going up. That's fine. That's great. Okay. And just keep looking at the square. Looking at the square. Looking at the square. Looking at the square. That's right. Keep looking at the square. Looking at the square. Looking at the square. Hypnosis is about fascination. It's about concentration. It's about focus. Yeah? Okay? If you want the trance state, it's always induced. Always. Sleep. And go deeper and deeper and deeper. It's only a reaction to a suggestion. All hypnosis can be done wide open, open eyes. Yeah? When I'm actually working with somebody that I want to talk to, I just say, and open your eyes, open your eyes and be aware. Okay, what's your name? Paul. It's not, it's Lucy. What's your name? What's your name? Give me a name now. Lucy. Lucy, okay, that's fine. Now, the... the Thing, the thing is, I know Paul's a somnambulist, so I don't have to work to get that state. Could I work and get that state with 90% of you? Yes. But it, it, it might take differing amounts of time. So I'm using a somnambulist just to show you what hypnosis with a somnambulist is like. Yeah? The suggestions put in, although there's a little bit, because he's open eyed, there's a little bit of um, conscious... Uh, interpretation of what's going on there's a little bit of an internal battle going on there I don't care because I know what part of your mind what part of your mental process is always going to win an internal battle <coughs> what's your name tell me now Lucy even though he doesn't want to I know his subconscious mind will make him say the truth and my truth is his truth at the moment okay sleep and go deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper. If you notice here, we've got, we, we, we've got rapid fluttering of, of the eyelids. Do you see that? That's not rapid eye movement. Rapid eye movement is when you see the balls of the eyes going behind. It's actually eyelid flicker, and that can go on for the whole time that they're actually there. Okay? Are you happy to come out of this state now? Okay. And your name's Paul. Everything's back to normal. If I didn't put his name back... It would stay loose until I did. But it would cause a lot of confusion, trust me. Especially when he went home. Brilliant clip. Um, oh, what I you. like most about that, apart from the, uh, the, the obvious as I'm kind of doing it the way that it was done, um, I love to see when they struggle with a suggestion. If you know exactly what like you said there, you know, his conscious was trying to get in the way of that and he, 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 he didn't want to say it but he couldn't not say it. Um, yeah, and I love I suggestions when they that. go like that. Run it, run it again. Run it again. Right? There's several, oh, tests. I've, 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 There's several tests going on. When I put my hand yeah. between his hand, I want to make sure that he's not going to go into trance. So I put my hand yeah. like that, and I put it from the top down. Now, if he's going to go into trance, he's going to go then. But I'm saying yeah. Look at the square. Look at the square. Look at. The, don't take your eyes away from the square. So I know I'm positive. He is reacting to to my suggestions positively because his eyes didn't close. And then when I say I say, and th th there's always a battle going on in there. And I know he doesn't want to say, you know, because I want to do a really good demo because I'm paying three and a half grand for a three camera team to be there <laughs> and sing <laughs> and everything. So I wanted it to be really good. So of course I use suggestion. Now I've had a couple of hypnotherapists, it, um, Jason, it was Paul Dawkins, um, I taught oh. him, but after that. But, um, you know, I've had therapists say to me, yeah, but you're just using suggestion. Yeah, well, that's what hypnosis is. Yeah. End, of, end of story. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. You know, somebody asked, before we got cut off, they asked what my favourite trick is. And that's got to be amongst them. 
Um, we don't call them tricks, by the way. I call them routines. <laughs> because I'm theatre trained, and they are routines, or scenes, or skits, if you're American. And I don't like that either, but they're not tricks. Magicians do tricks. Yeah. Um, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but uh, my favourite, the, the one that gobsmacked every audience, bar any, was first done by Robert Halpin. Yeah. And that was the onions. Yeah. That was giving yes. people onions and telling them they're eating an apple. And Robert Halpin yeah. was the very, very first hypnotist to do that. And Andrew Newton, who played who played violin in his band, yeah, because that's where Andrew learned. He, he, and after Robert disappeared, he just disappeared off the face of the earth. Um, Rumour is that he was a gambler and that he's now holding up part of the King's Bridge in Glasgow. But, um, <laughs> that, you know, you know what rumours are like. They're not true, are they? Exactly. But, um, <laughs> you know, but he, he did this uh, off froze. No, I've come back. Hmm. Um, no, you're back. You're there. You're definitely there. But, um, but he was the first one that did that. And the first time I give 12 people onions... And they're eating them, and I picked some um, that they, they, they were Cuban onions, and they're really red or sharp from a little shop down the road. And I thought, right, this is either going to work or it's not. I'm crying. I can't see because <laughs> right into them, the fumes are going everywhere, and that causes that causes lactic uh, that, that not lactic acid that causes acid. Um, it's actually a mild sort of uric acid that goes into the air when you when you burst an onion open. The front three rowers in this working men's club, <laughs> they're all crying, and the people on stage are not reacting physically Brilliant. in any way whatsoever at all to eating onions because they thought they were eating fruit. And yeah. the first time I did that with 12 people, I thought, fuck me, I'm an hypnotist. <laughs> there's no better feeling than when that your first time that you realize that you are a hypnotist yeah so i think that's that's one of the things that you you kind of you know i've seen you push online in your trainers as well is it is about that intent it's about that belief in yourself and that that person is going into hypnosis uh, which is 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 a big milestone for anyone doing hypnosis sure. whether it be one hundred percent belief. If you if you for one yeah. minute lose belief that you can hypnotize, you won't do it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that you, that's why I think the working men's clubs were always a good training ground because once you can do it in that environment, um, then you can do it anywhere. So I think that helps that belief system as well. well um, when, what's, when, what's I, don't, I don't know so much. I don't know so much. You want to try? You want to try a couple of pubs like. The King's Arms in Coventry on a Saturday night, you know, when when they say, right, we're, set, we're setting your stage up in that corner, Gaffer, because when the fight starts, you'll be nearest the door. Um, but <laughs> the, shed, the, the shed in Annan, just across the border, I remember walking in, and there's a big sign across the front door that says, the home of the Tartan Army. It's the most Scottish yeah. pub in Scotland. I've walked in. And there's a Scottish football match on. And I've walked out and I've gone, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. And literally, you've never seen 200 Scots go, ah, fucking English. And turn the back to me. <laughs> that was a tough gig. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. you, go, you go to Glasgow and um, if you've never seen him, you want, you want to see him. I don't know if he'd do this, you know, because he's a bit, you know. But, um, but Peter Powers still Peter does. Powers. He still does Glasgow, you know, but um, he's, hard, he's really because... hard to talk to because he comes from Bolton, you know. But <laughs> yeah. he's got to. Up north. Uh, yeah. uh, but, um, great, great, great hypnotist. Uh, but yeah, he does, uh, he does the Glasgow Pavilion and he does the midnight show there as well, which is nice to have the, the, the show. What do you mean by great hypnotist? You mean, you mean he can walk up to somebody and bang him under? Because no, it's it's about it's, it's great, about Peter is a great showman. He's a great yes, and I think that makes a great hypnotist. Yes, yeah. Um, I think yeah, I think you can be a technically brilliant hypnotist 
but not a very good stage hypnotist. It's like you were saying earlier, you've got to be an entertainer that uses hypnosis. Peter Powers is a great performer. Yeah, you're right there. There's, yeah, there's people that are technically better, um, but what he does, the he's way a, that he does it, uh, is great. He's a big idiot. Yeah. Tell him when. Tell him when you. <laughs> said you're a big idiot. Kid. <laughs> well, I've, I've I've yet to meet a a I've shy. Yet to meet him, mate. I said to him that I could get somebody to walk up to him and say, "Chase says you're a big idiot." Git. No, I still am on that bet because everybody <laughs> well, everybody everybody chickens out on that one. Do you know what? If I see him, I will definitely say that to him. <laughs> Jonathan, it's been absolutely great to have you on. I always ask people for two books to recommend about stage hypnosis. You've already showed us one. The second one is definitely your book, Deeper and Deeper, or any of your books, to be fair, for stage hypnosis. What's next for you? Hello? <laughs> What's next for you, Jonathan? I'm thinking because I, you know, oh. I've never read I've never read Ulman McGill's Encyclopedia of Stage Hypnosis because I got I, I read about two pages and got bored. But um, <laughs> I, I love I love this I love this. Um, yeah, I love I love um, I love Kreskin's book. Um, Banachek's Psychological Subtleties is great. These are all yeah. mental. I recommend mentalists because yeah. it's changed now. And the face of yeah. hypnosis changed thanks to a guy called Darren Brown, who actually made it grow up. Yeah. Yeah. Um, into a more modernized thing. So um I I I I would tend to read a lot of stuff by mentalists. I, I wouldn't yeah. read anything by by stage hypnotists and unless you like that that guy and that approach yeah you know yeah um, i mean a lot of my stuff is probably very old hat now you know <laughs> you know um when i'm met when i'm mentoring people now we, we 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 look at the first question that if i was mentoring you now the first question i'd say is right give me the name of the th your your three favorite comics working now because then we can have a look then we can have a look at their style of comedy and, and what you know what you can do with that i the yeah. best advice i ever got given on on what to do on stage was given me um jimmy carlo uh, who, who has been my best mate since we were babies literally he was next door but one neighbor you know and, um, we're, we're more like more like brothers, but Jimmy was um, was doing the hippodrome with Ken with Ken Dodd. And he rang me up and he said, um, "I'm doing the hippodrome with Ken Dodd. Come round and bring the chess set." Because he, <laughs> he he was an illusionist, so he got a load of gear on stage. He opened the second half, and he wasn't going home for two and a half hours. Sometimes yeah. <laughs> if Ken was really rolling. It could be three and a half hours. It could be half one before you. Yeah. Go. So I went round and we were sitting backstage and Ken came in two minutes before he's due to go on stage. He was always late, yeah, and but always on time, yeah? Yeah. He'd come in, he's doing his makeup as he's walking over and taking his coat off and his missus has got the dog, you know. And Jimmy introduced me and said, but the other then I said, oh, I'm a stage hypnotist. He said, can I give you a bit of advice? He said, yeah. I, said, I hate the way you bastards over milk everything. I said, right. He said, he said, do you want a bit of comedy advice? I said, yes, please. And this is from Ken Dodd. He said, I could, you, uh, let me introduce you. Let me, let, me, let me interrupt you. And if you're going to say the line I think you are, this is the one, li one of the one lines in your book that is absolutely hits home and it's such a great point. I, I, I'm, I'm breaking you up just to let people watching know that this is a great piece of advice. Go on. He said to me, he said, if it's worth a minute, give it 30 seconds. Absolutely. That's, what, happens that is the then, what happens then, 
and you don't milk the applause. You know, I, yeah. see, I see stage hypnotists doing this all the time. They're getting the applause off the audience. They stand there, they're smiling, they wait for the audience to, and then they go into the induction. While yeah. they're still laughing and applauding that routine, get the bastards back under, get the yeah. other routine going. By the time the audience have caught up with you, they're still giggling from the last one and now they yeah. start laughing at that one. And yeah. I think if you're doing comedy like that, and it's very slapstick stage hypnosis, if you're going to do comedy like that, it ought to be almost a continuous laugh and then you break it and then you can break it and say, hey, do you know something? This is fascinating. Watch this. Yeah. And then you do taking the name away or something like that. And you yeah. Go, yeah. Mm-hmm. That is a phenomenal bit of advice. Anybody watching? It's not mine. It's not it's not mine. It's from, it's oh, from, no, but yeah, but it's, it's, from, it's from the we're not worthy master, master of all of all stage performers, Ken Dog. Ken Dog, brilliant. Jonathan, uh, thank you very much for that nugget there as well. Uh, but thank you for being a guest as well. And thank you for your time and for bearing with us with the Facebook AI robots. Um, I shall. Uh, I'll post yeah, the link to this on YouTube as well. So, yeah, but thank you very much. And, uh, guys, I shall see you all next week for Grant Talks Funny Bits, uh, where we'll have some more technical issues. Um, so, please, uh, if you don't follow Jonathan already on social media, find him on social media. and I'll follow him in the next year, if anybody's interested. Absolutely. Uh, check out his website. I've been putting it up on the screen. It's Jonathan Chase. By the way, that does include uh, script writing, direction, everything. Brilliant. And that is absolutely one of the best things, best investments that you can put into your stage hypnosis business. So for me and for Jonathan, uh, I shall see you all next week and goodbye.